Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Glad you're in church today. Uh, it's the beginning of the year, January 3rd, so we're in Genesis um, 6, 7, and 8 is the readings for today. I, I encourage you to, to read uh, through the Bible in a year. I do it every year. I've done it now for... Oh my, 50 years, I guess. And I never, I never, uh, never learn it all because I think it's a, the Bible's a living book and, and you have to uh, just, and you know, the amazing thing about it, <clears throat> you know how you read a book that a man has written and you've read it. It might be kind of interesting. You might read it two times or maybe three, but then you kind of get over it, you know. But the Bible's a living book, and it's the Word of God. And every time I read it, I see new things, and it because it, it's the living Word, and it's uh, it's the it's the Word, the living Word that liveth and abideth forever. So it's it's very very uh, important that that we. Uh, we look at it now the book of Genesis it's good to start in the beginning like I said I've read it over every year completely about 50 times and then I read it besides that I read it every day I, I read the proverb for the day today is the third I haven't read it yet today but I will it's um uh, Proverbs 3 is wonderful. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. 3 and 4. Proverbs 3, 3 and 4. That's wonderful. And uh, I read the book of Acts for the day. Uh, Friday, I read Acts chapter 1. Saturday, Acts chapter 2. Today, Acts chapter 3. And I read from the Psalms every day. So I, I read the Bible. But... The book of Genesis is especially important because the Savior of the world, the Lord Jesus Christ, he was the creator of the world also. That's very significant. You know, one, one of the biggest lies of the devil, and he has taken over our school systems and he has taken over our colleges and universities and he's taking over the thinking not only of America, but but around the world of the of the invalid, vile uh, theory of evolution, which says that mankind has evolved, <clears throat> and it hasn't. If you if you've been reading it, and it said there, as we looked at in the beginning, uh, it said after its own kind, you know, we're different. Our flesh is different than birds and and fish and Poly and everything, it's its distinctively different. I'm not a scientist, but if you were, you would see the composure of each different kind of animal life and that is different. There are some that are very similar, but God's a great creator of that. And now, did you, did you notice something that started in the Garden of Eden and has proceeded out through history and is here also uh, today. I've got to do this before I go much further. What is this? How can I turn this thing around? I don't know how. Dora said to turn the camera around and let her see the people. Doris Rafferty, you know. She's 97. And uh, her daughter, Sharon, is very concerned about her. So she keeps her tied up and she keeps her in a the closet there at home. And she she opens a closet on Sunday morning for and lets her just look out the closet door. She doesn't uh, allow her to to come out at all. She fe gives her food in there and she got a bedpan. She gives in there and everything, but she gets to look out. So she said she so misses you people. Sharon says, "Well, I've had her in the closet now for months. So would you just?" Turn the camera around so she can see the people a minute. So I'm going to do that. A little irregular. 
let me see. Now, how do I turn this camera on? See, this. There. There. There you go. See the people. Wave, wave, wave. Say hi, Doris. Hi, Doris. Hi, Doris. We miss you, Doris. Thank you for all you do all the years. We pray you get out of the closet soon. Okay. All right. Back to my puss. Preaching. You know that ain't true. She don't have her in the closet. She's got her tied up in the living room sitting on the couch. <laughs> you see what happened in the Garden of Eden is... Uh, the people, when I say the people in the Garden of Eden, who was that? Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve that's said. <laughs> you know, it says in the book of Romans, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, that's mankind, men and women, for all their sin. So, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to even tell my bad joke again. And forgive me. You know, I was telling the Lord this morning, I ain't going to fool around and do anything stupid. Here I'm doing stupid things about Doris in the closet. You know, I guess that's just a sin I've had over the years. Forgive me. Forgive me, Sharon. Sharon doesn't do that. You know, Sharon is the best daughter in the whole world. She loves her mother so much that it bowed, it, it it bounds very closely on idolizing her. It's very close to it. That she loves her so much. And she takes care of her every whim or need. So, and she's a wonderful daughter, Sharon is. And, of course, Doris, we know how wonderful she is. Uh, so, no, all of that things I told you, and a bit of it was true. But um, the uh, uh, wherefore, so, and then, but then people, then uh, um, who were the first two boys? Do you remember who, what their names were? Cain and Abel. Okay, Cain and Abel. Now, which was the firstborn? That, that's a little trickier. Cain was born first, then Abel. Now, the, the firstborn always in the Bible was the one that the blessing was bestowed back upon on. You, you, you remember that? And remember uh, Jacob and Esau and, and, and that? Uh, but... Uh, but they brought sacrifices to God. And Cain brought vegetables. Now before the, uh, they say before the, uh, how many of you are too hot? How many of you are too cold? How many of you are just right? All right, it seems like we're, we're pretty good. I don't know. Michelle's wiping her brow and. You got a fever, Michelle? No, I'm just being hot and cold all the time. Okay. So anyway, um, Cain, because of sin, he, he slew his brother because Abel brought a, a animal sacrifice. So people, right from the beginning, uh, people were, but you know, people got so bad by the sixth chapter. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. See, this was right in the beginning. And the daughters were born unto them that the sons of men saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them the wives, and, all, and which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for he also is flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. We got a little less than that. It's sneaking up, though. Doors sneaking up there in 97. And, and uh, they were, uh, we're talking about Noah today. <laughs> you know how old Noah was when he died? 959. They, well, you know why they had to live so long then? Because they had to get people on the earth, you know? So that's, that's cut back. But by the way, there's a lot of room. There's, a, you know, this crazy talk about overpopulation on the earth. That's crazy. There's a, there's a lot more earth here than there are people. Don't worry about that. We're just stupid. We, uh, uh, you know, on one end of the United States, they jam them all into New York. And on the other end of the United States, they jam them all to L.A., and in between there, there's miles and miles and miles of open land where you could live. You know what I mean? 
and a lot of it beautiful land. Have, have you ever driven through New York? How many of you ever driven from one quarter of New York to other? New York is beautiful. It's got rolling hills. It's got lakes. It's gorgeous, and there's all kinds of. But they, but they all went right down there to the other end, way the other end, and uh, uh, built them gigantic skyscrapers. <laughs> Jammed yourself all together. <laughs> I saw a picture on the, I, I don't look at, I, I usually just preach on Facebook, look at stuff once in a while, and I seen someone put a picture up there uh, uh, this morning, I, I looked at it, and uh, and it showed on, 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 New, on New Year's Eve, it showed uh, Times Square in New York, where there's usually a million people, and there's just a couple people there. And right above it, it it showed a picture of Wuhan, China. Wuhan, China is where the China virus came from. That's causing us, why people are wearing masks and stuff today and why all this stuff's going on. And Wuhan, China, you wouldn't believe the wall-to-wall -wall people. Man, they had more than a million people there. Fireworks going on and everybody jumping up and down. And, and uh, so that's what you get. That's what you get from the godless communists in China, Wuhan, China, that spread that uh, virus all over the world, the devil's people spreading that mess around all over the world. And there were giants on the earth for four in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, they bare children of them and the same became mighty men and were old of renown, and God saw, the, uh, in verse 5, now listen, don't, it's not just this preacher, God bless you, I love you, but you know, things never change, it didn't change from Genesis uh, 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 1, 1, in the beginning, God created, and then when he had Adam and Eve, and then we had Cain and Abel, and, 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 and now we've got uh, uh, some of the uh, godly Christian women that were saved women, and these heathen men, they were intermarrying with these heathen men. Uh, and God saw the wickedness of man was great on the earth. And to every generation, that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. You know, there's, there's things that mankind does. You can't even imagine how wicked it is. They got this uh, uh, computer uh, that... Uh, from the uh, elect uh, going to be the president Biden, his son, they got they got his computer. He took it in his high. He took it in the computer store. They're locked up, and they and they got stuff on that computer. They say that his sexual activities on that uh, computer are so vile that it's unimaginable that anybody kind of a normal person would see it, would, would throw up and just say, how vile, how terrible. The, the thoughts of man and the wickedness of man, that's what they say. I don't know. But they say it's there on that computer. I, I don't know. Um, continually evil, verse 6, and it repented the Lord that he hath made man on earth. So God said, they ain't doing so good. And it grieved him in his heart. God's heart was grieved because of what? Because of sin, because of wickedness. Yeah. Because of Cain's wickedness. Because of Adam's and Eve's wickedness. Because of you and my wickedness. Do you understand? And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. He said, I'm sick of it. I made this and, they, and, and, and wickedness, wicked hearts. Oh, I'm glad for this. Look at verse 8. This is a big verse. Look at verse 8. Chapter 6, verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Oh. Noah found grace. You know what grace is? Everybody know what grace is? Unmerited favor. Yeah. That's what grace is. Something we don't deserve. God's given us something we don't deserve. Isn't that wonderful? You get something that you don't deserve. Wow. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Then it goes on talking about their generations. Uh, 
begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. This is the reading for it. I mean, this is, you say, you just pick out, you try to look real hard to find something that says bad about people, but the Bible basically talks good about people. No, no the Bible don't do that. I'm just reading the daily reading. And, 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 and every day I read the Bible, going through the Bible in a year, I read about some wickedness. In, you understand what I'm saying? So it, it ain't just that crazy old Varga preacher uh, uh, preaching the bad, looking out to find one little bad thing that's hardly in the Bible. No, you just read the pages of, of, of who, who man is, who we are, huh? was corrupt for all the flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth and God sent unto Noah the end of all flesh has come before me for the earth is filled with violence through them and behold I will destroy them with the earth make thee an ark of gopher wood now some of you are pretty smart Bill especially he's pretty smart knows about different stuff and all that from what I understand we don't really know today what gopher wood is. There's been some people that think they know that. I'm not sure what gopher wood is. But but there was some kind of special wood that was gopher wood, and that's what he was supposed to use. I'm not sure what kind of tree it was. Different people say it's different things than that, but I'm, I'm not sure. You know what it is, Bill? It's not a wood. It's a process. It's what we call lamin today. Oh, really? It's set there. What it is is the wood is boiled and the sap is drawn out of it. Oh, and then it's shaped in a thing, and then you put a next layer on it to make it form. Oh, okay. It's, that sounds like a good explanation. That's what, that's what it is. Well, I think you're doing better than a lot of these Bible expositors. Yeah. I think maybe you do better than the Bible expositors because they sit around and read books all the time, and you work with your hands, and you probably got a better understanding yeah, it's of like, it. It's like a lamin. Yeah, it's kind of like laminated. Uh, yeah, and, and it's been processed it through the sap and stuff. Yeah, and so it, it weathers, it's weather the storm. And it's stronger. Yeah, stronger. Good explanation. I like it. And the room shalt thou make in the ark, and thou shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. Put some water seal on it. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it. The length of it, he gave it uh, 300 cubits, and the breadth 50 cubits, and the height of 50 cubits. And they say, people that are much smarter than I they say that a, that, that a vessel like that, that would be something like a giant ocean vessel, uh, that it says that with the, uh, they, they say that, that it's, it's a feasible thing that you can get those animals in that, in that, in that vessel. So um, I don't, I ain't an expert on that. I don't know much about that. That's what they say. And the windows I shall make to the ark, and it tells about what to make. Uh, and I and verse 17 and behold I even I will bring a flood upon the water upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life from under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die but with thee will I establish my covenant so here's a covenant God makes covenants covenant is a promise certain kind of promise he makes make a covenant and thou shalt come into the ark thou and thy sons Remember we read who their sons were? Remember? Sam, Ham, and Japheth, the three sons. And their wife, and thy wife, and thy son's wife. So so, so how, how many went in, uh, how many humans went in the ark? Eight. Had eight in there. Uh, Noah, his three sons, and his uh, three daughter-in-laws. And of every, every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort, shalt thou bring unto the ark to keep them alive with thee and they shall be male and female now why do you think now it uh, uh, <laughs> all you have to have is a is a brain of a dodo bird to figure out that it takes a male and female to reproduce you know i mean did you i mean but everybody here realize that now, how many of you know that yeah, uh, you know uh, that. Uh, uh, <laughs> How many of you know that it wasn't Adam and Steve; it was Adam and Eve. <laughs> Adam and Steve would have went out of existence real fast. 
<laughs> yeah, they would have looked fabulous, though, yeah. <laughs> so we got all these different kinds. Let's pick it up on chapter 7. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou in all thy house. Now, who, what was all his house? His three sons, his, his three daughter-in-laws, and his wife. Eight of them, okay? Uh, into the ark. Uh, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. For thee have I seen righteous. So he's seen, he seen some good in, in Noah. Now, it says... Of every clean beast, thou shalt take of the seven. So the, the sacrifice animals, he was he was take seven instead of three. And he tells about it. And for seven days I will s cause it to rain upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. That'd be a lot of rain, huh? Did, did you ever see sometime we get these gully washers that come? Usually here in Florida, where, where we live here, I'm preaching from Florida, that usually the rain comes real hard, but don't last long and it quits. But, I mean, this was for 40 days and 40 nights. I mean, just pouring rain. Just so, Now, we have just right over here from the church, over on Riverside Drive, behind us over here a couple blocks. Uh, you just get a, a, you, you, you get a little hard rain for an hour, and, and you, can't, you can't drive on the street. They, got, they, got put a, they don't have the proper sewage there to do it. And uh, rivers run right next to it, but they ain't figured out to get it to run in the river, whatever. There's probably a way to figure that out, but they haven't figured it out. Uh, but but anyway, uh, um, it rained hard. I will destroy from the face of the earth, and Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded. And you know, that's all we have to do. Hey, wouldn't it be just good if we just learned to do what God said? Do you know where we find what he said in the Bible? Why well, do you think I encourage you to read? I got the Bible reading chart. It's the third of the month, third of January. Don't even go back to the first to start. Grab a chart on it. I, I buy them, you know, I buy them Bible reading charts 5,000 at a time. I've got plenty on hand always. I give them away everywhere I can. There's just a pile of them right back there on the table. Now. Just pick it up. Start on the third. You, 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 you don't even have to go back to the first. Just do six, uh, do six, seven, and eight in Genesis and do three in Matthew. That's for today. I've read those. I read them in the morning when I get up. You ought to do it. Our church needs to do that. You know why our church as a whole, I'm not talking about you as an individual or me as an individual, but I'm, t I'm telling you this. Listen now. Uh, do you know why our church is so ignorant on the Bible? Anybody got a clue? We don't read it enough. We don't study it enough. That's... That's why I mean you 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 study about some. I like I like I use Bill for an example. I haven't seen Bill in a while. It's good to see him. He's my friend. Been for years. He used to work here all the time for a mission. I'm glad to see him back today. But you know, uh, 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 Bill Bill can do a lot of things with his hands. You know, they they used to be. I never watched it much. I'm not a big TV watcher. But there used to be a a show on television called MacGyver. And, and he can make stuff out of nothing or, or you know something different and so make it work and especially I guess what it was when he was in a in a bad situation or whatever you know but Bill knows how to make stuff work why because he studied it he knows about it that's why he knew about the gopher wood uh, and that's why he know because but because he knows about how to protect things from water and and in this that good morning and so anyway um uh, and Noah did according to all the Lord. How about you? Huh? Do you do what the Lord commands? Huh? The Bible tells you. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. If you say, yes, yes, God, I hear you. Like I did over 50 years ago when I got saved. I said, I believe you, Lord. I'm off to stuff. I think Christians ought to 100% completely abstain from alcohol, period. I have. 
A lot of you that even sit here in this auditorium today, you haven't. The devil's still lying to you. You're going to have your drink. Then you're going to drink too much. And on and on. Get a few bucks in your pocket. Some I got I got a lot of good people, men and women, that are good workers and, and all in all they're 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 they're, they're working everything. But once you get a few dollars in their pocket, they get drunk and lose their job. Any of you ever do that? Okay, couple couple honest people. <laughs> couple honest people. Yeah. And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit fornication. They ain't a Christian ought to be shacking up. They ain't a Christian ought to be watching pornography. They ain't a Christian that ought to be uh, doing these things. Anything's commanded in the Bible. If you're a true born again Christian, God says you ain't supposed to be doing it. And if you are doing it, you need to repent. Someone put up on the Facebook. Somebody that came here. She living in North Carolina now. And uh, she had on the I don't very seldom ever look at the Facebook other than I preach on it. But once in a while I flip down there. And I saw, I knew her because she used to be a church member here. And uh, and, and, and she had a, a, a thing on Facebook. It said this. And 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 it it talked about I don't remember the exact words I'm not going to try to even quote but what it said it it, it kind of said that Jesus died for our sins and we, He's forgiven all our sins and and something about he, we 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 are made right with Him and that's but that's a start I put a comment on there and I put it up you know answering what you put up there. And I said, that's a good start. But we need 1 John 1, 9. You see, 1 John 1, 9 says to a Christian, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. You see, the starting point of getting saved, and you are, and you go to heaven, but... It don't mean everything going to be hunky-dory because the devil going to be knocking on your door every day. How many of you as a Christian, you say the devil knocks on my door and tries to get me to sin like he does me? Come on. Huh? Yeah? Yeah? But let me give you good news. Let me give you good news. Any, any of you getting hot yet like I am? I guess I'm probably getting hot because I'm Come preaching. I, 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 does it still feel okay in here, buddy? Okay? I just sweat it out there. That's all right. I ain't really sweating. They ain't coming. Michelle's the only one sweating. She's in the back row there sweating, wiping the perspiration coming down her forehead. Uh, but you see, uh, we need First John 1, 9. And I kindly uh, sent her that. I didn't look if I had a response or not because I just get out and look at a couple of things. Get, if I see someone I know, I read what they say and, 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 I, and I go off, you know, and that's just about it. But Noah did according to all the Lord commanded. That's what you need to do. First of all, the Bible says this. The Lord commands everybody to repent. That means he wants us to get saved, amen? But then it also means he wants us to repent after we're saved. You know, repentance is a, is, a, is a daily activity for a Christian. You say, oh, grace, grace, great. Yeah, grace, grace. Ah, yeah. If he, <laughs> uh, Titus 2, 11, 13. For the grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared to all men, mankind, men and women, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, godly in this present world. That's right now. Looking for that great hope and the glorious appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. I was going to preach on uh, uh, 15 Corinthians resurrection chapter. I love that. I'd all prepare for that. And then I got my mind back on Genesis and Noah. I said, I'm going there. I, uh, someone said when I came in, I came in a few minutes late today, and 
Someone says, oh, you're prepared for the message. Man, I've been, I got so many messages to prepare each other. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you one thing. When I was a young preacher and I first started, I used to fight and sweat and be tortured trying to get a message for Sunday morning. I ain't had that problem for years, man. I just wondered, should I preach this or should I preach that? Or not that I'm anything, but I'll tell you what. <laughs> you read the Bible a lot and stay in the Bible, you have a lot of stuff to talk about. And it ain't going to be talking about football. or You know what? I ain't watched one football game or basketball game or baseball game. Nothing, nothing, nothing. All year, nothing. You know what? I'm none the worse for it. huh? I ain't none the worse for it. No, I'm better because of it. Amen. <laughs> I'm not going to get into talking about that. And Noah did according to all the Lord commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. And these pages are close together. And Noah went in. And his sons and his wife, and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood, of clean beasts and of beasts that are not clean, and of fowls and of everything that creepeth upon the earth. There went in two by two and so on. Uh, verse 11, in the 600 years of Noah's life in the second month and the seventh day of the month, the same day where all the fountains of the earth deep broke up. And the windows of heaven were open, and the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And the self same day, uh, Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, and the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife and the three wives of the sons with them, went into the ark. Then all the animals went in. The flood was thirty days upon the earth. The waters increased. The waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the face of the waters. Fifteen cubits upward did the water prevail, and the mountains were covered, and all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of the fowls, of the cattle, of the beasts, and of every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth, and every man, in whose nostrils was the breath of life, of all that was in him, dry land. Now, I don't know. You know, I don't question God. Did God have to have Noah, who was a carpenter, he worked with his hands, take 120 years to build this ark? And did you know what he preached for, for 120 years? He preached salvation. He had no converts. I, I don't know. It said righteous. I don't know if that was just talking about Noah or he's talking about his family. Really, personally, as I read stuff that happened in that after the, they come back, I mean, I'm not sure that his sons and, and that were saved. I don't know. Look, possibly they weren't. You know, there's stuff going on there. I ain't going to go into that today. Another story. But, uh, God could have done this in a different way. But it took 120 years to build that. And you know there had never been rain before. Did you know that? It never rained before. It used to be a canopy over the earth uh, around the world. And it, it watered it by dew. And that's the way it was. So this is the first time it rained. They'd never seen that before. And you know that, and this is kind of another story, I'll just mention it briefly in passing. But they say that that flood and the power of that water uh, was a reason uh, that you, and there were dinosaurs back in that old time there, you know. Big, big, big animals, big creatures, big dinosaur things. But that's why they find in the sediment that they find now is that, that they got stuff that was, smaller and that wasn't quite as old as the dinosaurs that uh, that are uh, they, they, it's just sitting in the same level see and so then they come up with this again crazy theory that uh, 
earth is millions and millions. It's about 6,000 years old. That's it. That's it. That's what the Bible teaches, about 6,000. But the point I wanted to make is God didn't have to do it with a flood, 120 years. But I think he did it to show the example of the wickedness of man. And Noah preached righteousness for 120 years. No one would get saved. I'm not completely convinced even his children were saved. I don't know. Some of the things he did after that, I, I question it. I don't know. But but I'm just saying that God could have had... Uh, God could have done it in a thousand different ways, but this is the way God chose to do it. Why did God choose to send His Son, Jesus Christ, who eternally existed, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? I met a guy in Sam's Club yesterday. I was buying stuff for the meal today, and there was a guy in Sam's Club. He was a pretty good hustler, young guy. I think he said he was 30. Yeah. Because he said he'd been saved. I, t I talk to people about the Lord I'm wherever I am. and I go to Sam's Club and buy the stuff, a lot of stuff I buy here for the food, meal we're having today. I bought the stuff from Sam's Club yesterday. It's good stuff. And uh, But I go over by where the chairs are. You, any of you ever been in Sam's Club? Did, yeah, did, did you ever see where they got them, where they got the recliners and the chairs and everything? Any of you ever go there and sit down in them chairs? Every time I go in there, I do. Especially if I'm with my wife. <laughs> you know how women are in the store. They poke around and they look at it. Shake it, look at it. Pick it up, put it back on the back down there. Push the cart about halfway down the aisle. They come back. <laughs> All you women do that, right? Do you do that? Yeah, did it. Mary says she does. Do you do that? Michelle, you do that too? Is that the way you shop, Michelle? Oh, she she goes just you grab it. Is that the way you do it? Sure you do it. Come on, come on, girls. Own up. So when I'm with my wife, and she just went <laughs> she just went to be my company. She we're gonna be in and out of here. She filled the whole card up. I went with her. I, I got my. I had my stuff. I knew she'd gonna be a while, so I went over there by the recliners and the, and the couches, and I sat down. <laughs> I finally got Carl to enjoy one of my sermons here. <laughs> you know, people like the stories. They don't like much the hard preaching, but they like the stories. <laughs> Brother Hiles also used to say. <laughs> That's why you got to tell a lot of stories to keep people's interest. You know? <laughs> Too much Bible, they get mad. <laughs> they fall asleep. <laughs> Getting quiet in here yet. <laughs> but, the, but the happy time during preaching is the storytelling time, right? <laughs> but you know, it ain't a bad time. To, it ain't bad to tell stories. D. L. Moody, the greatest preacher uh, of the 1800s. And by the way, he only died at 61. He was only 61 years old. He's about your size. He kind of looked like you. I told you that when you come here with a suit on, you look like Moody. Uh, yeah, when you, with a suit on, you look just like Moody. You get everything about him. And uh, but but anyway, he was preaching, and and he tell, Moody preached a lot of uh, tell stories all the time. You know who else told a lot of stories when he preached? Jesus. <laughs> Look at the Bible. Read, uh, read in Matthew where Jesus, he tells stories all the time. Yeah. So it ain't nothing wrong. I get accused of that. Some people say, oh, you tell too many stories. I'm in good company. D.L. Moody, Jesus, and the likes. I'm okay. I'm going to keep telling stories. I ain't going to crit now. There's nothing drier unless the Holy Ghost is really there. I mean, if the Holy Ghost is really present, a preacher can just stand there and preach out straight truth. It's hard. If there's really Holy Ghost there, people can take that. But most of the time, that ain't the case. You've got to have stories mixed in there. You've got problems. You lose them. Just being honest with you, that's, uh, that's life. So what story was I on? Oh, I was in Sam's. Michael's the guy's name. Good-looking guy. Slick tongue. 
uh, he had he was sitting he was sitting in the chairs where I'm in. People come by and, and 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 he was selling stuff. He was one of these guys that uh, you might see him over there. Go to Sam's Club. He's Michael. Got his hair shaved up straight on. I mean, you know how them haircuts today where it's straight up and then kind of puffed up like that. Clean cut looking guy. Six foot two, good looking guy. And and he's talking to this person. What 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 he did was he makes appointments for people to get uh, uh, for someone to come out there and, and give you a quote. I'm putting windows in your house or a roof or something like that. And I was amazed. I don't know why I'm telling you all this, but I thought it was kind of amazing. I says, yeah. I asked him about his business, and and he took and I says, well, uh, it sounds like you're just trying to get him in the door there. He says, yeah. That's all I have to do. He says, if I get an appointment where they get their foot in the door and get in there, he says, I get 150 bucks. I said, wow. <laughs> These guys want to get their foot in the door. They must really be hustlers and be sure to go sell somebody, you know. Did you ever get them on the phone where they call you? Uh, they, they won't stop. If, if you tell them, I just got new windows. Well, they're going to go bad soon. You need to hear about these. They, they don't stop. <laughs> Did that ever happen to you on the phone? Anyway, they don't get in my house. One called me the other day. <laughs> I just didn't the first time. But they says, where you live, Daytona? Ah, oh, the water's terrible in Daytona Beach. I said, no, we got good water in Daytona Beach. <laughs> I says, it tastes good, and we got a good, oh, no, you don't know. I need to, I need to come in there and take a sample, and I'll show you scientifically how your water is no good and you need our filtration. They probably charge you a couple thousand bucks for some kind of filtration system. They call it ionized, hocus pocus, this or that or the other thing and give you a bunch of baloney, but they don't get it. <laughs> you know, I, I just like to have fun enough to sometimes I talk to them. I just talk stupid to them, you know? <laughs> kind of entertainment for me. <laughs> oh, my Lord. I got to get back to the Bible. Whoa. Let's get back to Noah and the flood. Now, God could have done it any way he wanted. But he done it with a man building it. I guess his boys probably helped him. What do you think? You think his boys probably helped him build that? Huh? I think he would have. I, I, if, it was, if it was me, I'd made my boys help me. I don't know if you get any of them heathens to help them. They all, all went to hell. They didn't care nothing about them. Of course, I don't think they want to help because he's beaten there. He preached every day. Told them, repent, you're going to hell. And they said no, so they weren't going to. And he built it a boat. A boat? What do you want a boat for? It's going to rain. <laughs> rain? <laughs> what are you talking about rain? <laughs> well, that's what happened. <laughs> huh? What was his name? His name was Noah. Yeah, Noah. Yeah, Noah. Then the Old Testament. In the ark, you know, took all animals two by two. They got, uh, you know, they, they built a replica of Noah's ark. I think it's in Tennessee. It's either Kentucky or Tennessee, one of them two states. Probably Kentucky. But they built the thing. It's a Christian organization. And and uh, they got elevators going to different. So an old guy like me can go in there. And uh, uh, and they have everywhere you stop and talk, they have people talking to you and try to get you saved. I hear it's real nice. I talked to uh, people that uh, you know who went there. Uh, Jim, who used to run the kitchen at 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 uh, Salvation Army. You remember Jim? The he was in charge of the kitchen at. Uh, he moved. Uh, he moved to Minnesota. And you know what? About a month ago. Jim died, and he's a young man. He wasn't that old. He's probably at most in his early 60s, I would say. And that's particularly, how many of you knew Jim from over there? Yeah, Bill, know him. Yeah, he, a couple, I know you guys used to work with me, you know, we used to go over there. You guys used to have to work. I'd sit over there on the side and talk to Jim. He liked talk. <laughs> I liked him. He's the same man, old Methodist guy, free Methodist background. Anyway. How to get on him? Oh, oh, he went to that Noah's Ark. He said it's great. I never go. I'd, I'd go, but my wife told me she's not. I don't want to go. I read about it in the Bible. It's in Ken, 
I think it's in Kentucky. When you get off, don't be looking at your phone now. When you get off, just hit your b button on there and say, where's Noah's Ark display? It'll come right up on there. <laughs> Mount Air, right? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right on that one, Bill. <laughs> oh, time going by. Ma'am, this isn't question and answer. This is preaching. I'm, you have to ask me the questions after. I can't interrupt anymore. I'm sorry. This ain't this ain't like a Bible study where we're talking back and forth. We do that in Sunday school, but we ain't having Sunday school right now. I'm sorry. We, you got a question after? You can ask me. I'll be glad to answer you. Um. Oh, let me get back on track here. So, he made a covenant. Chapter nine. It's actually tomorrow's. Might want to mention something about chapter 8. Let me just look here quick. Just he brought him back on land again. Chapter 9, the covenant with Noah. And God blessed Noah. Chapter 9, 1. Tomorrow's reading actually start of it. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth, and upon every fowl of the air, and, and all that moveth upon the earth, and upon all the fishes of the sea. Your hand is... See, not... The, the, God's made a, a... I mean, even if you go in the jungle as a person, not... They say you got uh, lions and tigers and, and uh, big old animals and a lot of nasty animals. If you go in the jungle... Because you come in the jungle, they don't all get together and attack you and eat you up. You know why? Because God said they're going to be afraid of you. Actually, they're afraid of you. Now, they might in some circumstances, if, if, you, if you attack their young ones or if they feel they're in danger or that, they'll fight you. But they don't come looking for you, actually. Maybe once in a while, if they're real hungry and they can't, they, they would rather not eat you. They'd rather eat, you know, a lion would rather eat a... Uh, uh, some kind of antelope or something like that rather than eat you. But if it can't get an antelope, he might come get you if he has to. But generally, they, they, they don't do that. And, and they're t that's why, you know, see, man is different than the animals. My favorite animal uh, is a rhinoceros. <laughs> that's my favorite animal, rhinoceros. The thing ain't got no neck. it got that horn sticking out here like that. And, and the thing can run fast. You know that big old heavy thing and they're short legged, they, they, boom, boom, they can run. The best picture I love to see is when they have these safaris uh, where, 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 where they got these land rovers out there taking pictures of the, of, of the rhinoceros. And, and the rhinoceros get tired of being followed by them and he turn around and run after them and he can't get away and he knocks the truck over. Did you ever see that? <laughs> he just. He run up right along cycle, boom, hits him with that nose. And they, <laughs> they got power, man. I mean, they, they can do you in if you want. But that's my, that's kind of crazy. But that's, that's one of my very favorite. I kind of sound kind of stupid. Some say, well, I like a bird. I like a canary or something. I like a rhinoceros. I guess something different. You don't like a rhinoceros? No, the babies are so cute. Huh? Babies, rhinoceros babies. Oh, they're cute. Yeah. Yeah, they're cute. Lion babies are cute too. <laughs> and God blessed Noah and his sons. Multiply and punish the earth. Then it tells you about blood, how not to eat blood. Life is in the blood. Blood isn't life, but it makes you, you got to have blood to live. And then you, 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 ain't, you ain't supposed to. Uh, you, you, if you're going to, uh, now you know before the flood they's eating vegetables and just stuff out. now someone I think it was I look I look at some comments I think it might have been John Wesley that made this comment I think it was him I, I, I read several Matthew Henry and Wesley and John Gill a couple other guys I read their comments on it I, I, I like to look at, I like to basically read the Bible I read what comments of men that have done something for God in the past I read their comments and that but but he thought that before the flood, that the ground was so much richer and better that uh, we kind of ruined it. 
uh, I mean, uh, the flood kind of made it so it wasn't as good, and then he let us eat meat afterwards. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm not sure. Because I know uh, probably that there are people, like uh, my, my grandson, Stephen, he comes, uh, I don't know, he might be working today or out of town, but he comes to church here, and, and uh, uh, he and his wife, uh, they used to call them vegetarians. How come they don't call them vegetarians? How come they call them vegans now? What's the difference? That's just a modern word for a vegetarian. Is it any different than a vegetarian? What is it? Vegan doesn't eat uh, dairy. Huh? Also, doesn't eat dairy. Also. Like dairy oh, it doesn't. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, just oh, they don't have dairy either. I mean, like milk or anything. Doesn't eat milk or, or cheese or anything. No cheese. Or well, whatever. But there, and listen, they're healthy people. And, and that's okay, and, and uh, there's people that have more power to them. Uh, I could more lean towards that as I'm old. You couldn't get me away from steak when I was young. Preach on. <laughs> you're, you're, you're still in that part of life where you can, yeah. Yeah, you could, all you need to, all you need to do is, is throw me a two-pound porterhouse steak. I don't need nothing else to eat. <laughs> Maybe some fried onions and <laughs> mushrooms. <laughs> That'd be my vegetable part, right? <laughs> Fly it in grease. <laughs> but today, I can go without. My my wife bought a couple steaks, and I could. I ain't. I ain't really into that much. I could eat. <laughs> I'd just soon eat some mashed potatoes instead of a steak. Now that sounds stupid. I mean, I would. That ain't the way I used to be, but that's the way I am now. I, I guess it's too hard for me to chew now, or I guess digest. I don't know. I guess it comes with old age. But anyway, uh, after the flood, they could they could eat animals. And um, I'm going to close. I'm done. Let me just say this, dear one. We see in Genesis now, we got to chapter 6, 7, 8, 9. And I, and I reviewed a little bit about the first chapter and the creation God created. And wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, Adam and Eve sinning. And then with Cain and Abel, Cain slew Abel. And then shortly after that, the wickedness of mankind and that everybody was destroyed other than the righteous Noah and his, and his three sons and his wife and his daughter-in-laws. So, and we sure got it today, don't we? As in the days of Noah, isn't it like that today? Isn't it like the days of Noah with the wickedness? How sad people are so concerned about politics. I think many Christians, even in the, for many years now, I've seen where Christians get involved in politics. I think it's very foolish because I don't think the answer is in politics. Democrat Party, Republican Party, or Independent Party. I think the answer is, as Second Chronicles seven fourteen says, if my people, God's people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Are you going to seek his face? And turn from their wicked way. Then will I hear from heaven. Amen. I'll forgive their sin and heal their land. That's what we need. That's what America needs. I've got a picture up there on our electronic sign in front of the church. It's got a it's got a lady with her head bowed down praying. Pray for revival. I got a man out there with his head bowed. Pray for revival. Got a sign out there. America needs revival. I got another sign flashes out. Just stop and look at our sign someday. You can find some stuff that'd be interesting to you. Yeah. Yeah. Repent, it says. Yeah. 
It says abortion is murder right out there on the sign. And it is. It talks about that right in here in this Genesis we're reading. It, it, it talks about capital punishment for murderers. That means that every, every abortion doctor is, is guilty of murder. You say, but it's the law, and, it, and it, it's against God's law. And you see, the, the law you're going to answer to is God's law, not man's law. You know, man can make bad laws, which they do sometimes. We've got some bad laws on, on the books. One of them is abortion right now in America. And there are others, too. There's no, Someone just broke the law there. There goes a police and a siren right down there on Ridgewood, chases some offender. Huh? Yeah, there she goes. Yeah. You think it was a she? Yeah. Well, oh, you know, there's more bad women drivers than men. Yeah, I know, Mary. I believe that, too. <laughs> Let's get serious, folks. Are you right with God? I don't. Only God knows. You can fool the preacher. You can fool your mom and daddy. You can fool your husband. You can fool your wife. You can fool your girlfriend. But you can't fool God. Amen. He knows it all. And you're going. You're going. You're going. Everybody going to stand before the judgment seat of God. And unless you're covered with the blood of Christ. And the power of his resurrection. And you've repented and turned from your sins. You can't go to heaven. I'm going to heaven. I repented April 4th, 1969. Have you? I hope you have. If you haven't, let's do it now. Lord, thank you for repentance. You've given us the grace of God, which bringeth salvation, hath appeared to all men. Denying ungodliness and worldly lust. That's repenting of our sins. Yeah. Would you deny ungodliness and worldly lust today and repent of your sins? Call upon the Lord. Lord, I believe you shed your blood. I believe you rose again. Would you save me? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God's not willing any should perish, but that all, all, A-L-L, -L, everyone can be saved. You just got to repent, turn from sin. Do it today. Pray this sinner's prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross and rose from the grave the third day. The best I know how with an honest heart, I turn from my sins, receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. No one looking around, please, just the preacher. You're in church today and you say, Preacher, I wasn't sure I was saved, but I prayed that prayer in a minute in my heart today. Would you slip your hand up if you did? Yes, 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 yes. Had five hands raised. Thank you, Lord. I pray for these dear ones. Only you know the hearts or the reality of their commitment to Christ. I know my commitment was real on April 4th, 1969, over 50 years ago. I hope these have. They know and you know. Thank you for their decision. Those out in Facebook. YouTube and so on, on the internet. I pray those that would be saved also. Help us to serve you. Help us to follow you. Help us to do what you say. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.